Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. It's a brand new premier show about achieving and sustaining success. Um, we have, we are filming live every Monday from 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on the uh, Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. Today's guest is Justin Cruz from KHON2 News, and we will be going beyond weather. Justin, hey! thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Rusty. And um, by the way, congratulations uh, on the new book, Beyond the Lines. I know that you've been working really hard. I, I mean, I've known you for like a decade and a half. <laughs> I never thought you'd be writing a book, but man, you powered through it. And I saw that entire process, so congratulations on that. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being here. And I want to ask you, Justin, mm. what is the forecast going to be like with the weather in this Think Tech uh, studio uh, In today. this studio, by the way, it's, look at the beach. It's it's gorgeous. I yes. mean, you couldn't get a better forecast <laughs> right now. Uh, it, it looks good. It looks good. And the, uh, the forecast for the show, I think, is uh, going to be very successful for you. So congrats on that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hundreds yeah. of thousands of people tune in to watch you on the news practically on a daily basis. Um, give us some of your history about the early years of Justin Cruz. Okay. Were, um, you, were you born in Hawaii? You, you know, I was not. Um, I moved here in 96, so I've been here going on 22 years now. Uh, I was born in Saigon, Vietnam. My mom is Vietnamese. My dad is from L.A. And both of them worked for the U.S. government in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. So I was kind of like, uh, you know, born there, and we had, uh, we lived in Saigon, and lived outside of the, the base uh, there, and one day my dad came home and said, we are leaving now. The war is, uh, U.S. is like withdrawing troops, we have to get out of here. So we took whatever we could and pretty much hopped on a plane, were evacuated to the Philippines, Clark Air Force Base, and then eventually Guam, which is where I grew up. So my dad basically said, Look, we moved, uh, I moved away from L.A. To, to live in another place. There's no way I'm going back to that, to that jungle that is Los Angeles. So I ended up uh, growing up on Guam, and it was, a very, it was a very nice place to grow up. I think um, I, I relished my years living on a smaller version of Hawaii. Guam is like only 150,000 people, but um, it was cool living, you know, always growing up in the Pacific and living on a tropical island. What did you like about living in Guam? I mean, did you play any sports? I mean, what kind of activities did you do? Well, I, you know, I, I mentioned it was, it was nice to grow up on Guam, and I think that one of the best things was uh, it's very small and well-connected, and the schools there, at least the, the ones that I went to, I thought were very good. As far as sports goes, I did play sports but was not in a team or a school team. It was football and volleyball, uh, but my dad was very much a businessman and very much an entrepreneur, and he was like, studies first, studies first. And he played sports, too. So, but he didn't want me to go into, like, doing nothing but sports, which is what he did. So uh, he was like, books first, family business first. Sports is something that you played, but you weren't on the school team. So, uh, yes, I did, but not to the point where, you know, I was in varsity, anything, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. what, so what lessons did you, did you learn in your youth that shaped you into the person that you are today? Well, uh, a lot of the lessons that, that I've learned, I learned from my hardworking mom and my hardworking father. And it was always, uh, the, the number one thing was, we don't spend frivolously on anything. You know, we lived in a very modest home. We always had uh, used cars. Uh, I don't think, I think we only bought one new car when I was growing up. Uh, we lived within our means because we had just lost everything in Vietnam and we were trying to rebuild our family. Uh, and so working hard, having that good work ethic, you know, staying late and coming in to work early, um, doing more than what is expected of you, uh, those are things that were just the norm for our family. And once that gets ingrained in you, then it never leaves, you know what I mean? So I, I try to still have that kind of work ethic today. Great. Yeah. Most people know you uh, as the famous Kachoan to famous. weather what? anchor. Okay. Very famous. Okay. <laughs> okay. But not a lot of people 
maybe the newer generation know that you were in radio yeah. and, and a great successful radio DJ. How did you get interested in radio? Uh, it's a funny, uh, funny story because I was in high school and I knew that I did not want to work in our family business, which was pest control. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a rat killer, bro. I am, I, I'm a very good rat and bug killer. Uh, but I knew I didn't want to do that in high school. And so I picked up, you know, those, those phone books, those big old yellow, uh, uh, yellow page phone books. And I started flipping through the phone book, looking for companies that I wanted to work for. And I found two. One was a scuba diving company and the other was my favorite radio station. So I call up that radio station in high school. I'm 17 years old. I call up the radio station and I talk to the program director and I get him on the phone and I said, hey, I want to be a DJ. I want to be just like the DJs I hear on your, on your radio station. And he's like, you're in high school? You're not gonna work here. We do not hire high school people. And I was crushed. So I went to his competitor, another radio station. I called him up. I'm like, hey, I want to be a radio DJ. And the program director who lives on Kauai right now, he's out, not in radio anymore. His name is uh, Jeff Elkins. Mm -hmm. um, he said, if you come in and you intern, then maybe I'll give you a shot in radio. So I came in, stayed lots of hours. Two weeks later, I'm on the air at midnight on a Saturday. While all my high school buddies were out at the beach partying, I was the radio DJ from midnight to 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, uh, and that was in 1992 in August, no, in, uh, yeah, in August of uh, 1992, and, I, and um, it became a 13-year career at that point. Right. right out of high school. In high school. In high yeah, school. In high so school. you had an obvious passion for music and, and radio. Um, what did you like about being a radio DJ? I liked, well, first off, you, you have to like the music, right? And, and at that time, the only way you could get music is through radio stations. And when, when somebody would break a song, that was significant, you know? When you gave away a, a prize, people would call in and, and sit in the car and not go into work until, you know, you can win a prize. Nowadays, there's so many different sources for music that you don't really need the radio DJ to break it, uh, break that song. I like that feeling of saying, this is brand new music. You're gonna hear it first, and you're only gonna hear it here. Are you ready? Here's the new jam. Boom, and you play that. that and I got, I, I really enjoyed being able to deliver that to, to people, which, you know, again, it was the only source for new music. Nowadays, it's digital. It you sounds know. like that was prehistoric times yeah. because of iTunes and everything there yeah. is now. But in addition to being a radio DJ, mm -hmm. you were also a program director while, in addition to being a DJ for the radio station. Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah, okay. So I, I was a, a weekend DJ, and this has started on Guam, and then I moved here mm -hmm. and uh, became also a weekend DJ, which led to a weekday slot, afternoons and mornings, and eventually program director. And what a program director does is the program director is in charge of the entire radio station. Everything you hear from the staff to the jingles that you hear, to when the commercials are played, to how the songs are rotated and what songs are rotated. That's all the responsibility of a program director. And I believe at the time, uh, I was 25 years old and I, I, probably among the youngest active program directors in the nation. I, I, I remember going to conventions and all the other program directors were, were much older than, than myself. And I, I was fortunate to have that opportunity at a very young age and it was a lot of work, but I loved it. So it really didn't feel like work. I got to play DJ on the air, and then I got to help develop other DJs and help them in their careers. And uh, it, was, it was a great few years back in the early 2000s. So what led uh, to you moving from Guam to Hawaii? I mean, can you tell me more about sure. what happened, sure. you know, how you came from Guam to Hawaii? Okay, so I was working, again, as a radio DJ, and, and I had uh, pretty much the graveyard shift, Monday through Friday, though, and I felt I was in a rut. I, I felt like I can't get out of this shift, and, and there were other people that were promoted to better shifts, and I was kind of looked over and, and I, I felt kind of forgotten. And I'm like, I need to make a change. And 
Uh, with some encouragement uh, from friends and family, I, I said, I'm going to be uh, moved to Hawaii and go to school uh, in the UH system. Not expecting to actually stay. My, the, the, the plan was go to Hawaii, get some schooling, and then maybe come back to Guam when, and, and work at another radio station or something like that. Well, you move to Hawaii, and guess what? You fall in love with the place, and you stay. And 22 years later, uh, here I am. And, and so that's, I really came here not to be a radio DJ or go into media. I just came here to, to, to go to school and just you know, it's kind of change up my life. You know, there, there comes these times in your life where you just get stagnant. And you really need to kick yourself in the okole sometimes and, and do something that is out of your comfort zone that is risky. And that's happened a few times in, in my life. And one of the few times was moving to this beautiful state. And you became one of the most successful radio DJs uh, for in Hawaii on 93.1. Um, do you, what is your recollection of mm -hmm. how we first met? Okay, so I, you know, just seeing you out and about, you know, here and there in passing, um, but I, I, the, you really got my attention when I was hosting a Pauhana party at Kincaid's restaurant, which was formerly Horatio's. Yes. And uh, the, I was doing 80s trivia. And I have a bank of trivia questions that I know that are not all that easy, but um, that I would ask during, you know, breaks with the band. So I'd ask, you know, what is the name of the lead singer of Duran Duran, right? <laughs> and people normally wouldn't get it. But there was one particular audience member that got every single trivia question. And that is you. That'd be me. You, <laughs> he cleared out my prize closet. I mean, all the prizes that I had for that night was T-shirts, mugs, keychains, CDs, all, <laughs> you know, free food. All, Rusty would just clear it out. And, and that got my attention. I'm like, this guy is just as nuts about 80s music as I am. <laughs> and so um, is that your recollection? Or? Exactly. Yeah? I, I think if we were to be a team mm -hmm. for a name the tune game. Oh, we'd kill it. That I think we, we'd win every yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's absolutely my same recollection okay. of okay. how we met. Right. Uh, and then we became close friends ever right. since. Right. Um, and then you were offered the an opportunity to be a weather anchor mm -hmm. on KHON2. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did that come about? Well, I, I, again, there, it came a point in my radio career when I was doing the morning show. And, and it, for me personally, mm -hmm. It was not challenging anymore. It was stable. My career was stable, but I wasn't getting challenged the way I wanted to get challenged. So, just so happened that my current boss, um, my current boss, Lori, uh, gave me a call and said, um, we have a position uh, and we think you might be interested in it. And I, I said, is it a reporter? Because if it's a reporter, I, I'm, I'm okay. I, I really, reporting is not something that I wanted to go into. And she said, it's, it's weather anchor. And I said, well, I don't really know anything about weather. I read weather reports in radio. Um, she said, don't worry, we'll train you. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. Now, this is something that is challenging and interesting to me because I love science. And now I get to restart my career. And after uh, a crash course in all types of meteorology and science, uh, I've been with uh, KHON going on 11 years now. That's absolutely yeah. amazing. So I know that you're very passionate about music, mm -hmm. radio, weather. We're going to take a, a quick break. We'll okay. be back in 60 seconds. Uh, we'll be back uh, with Justin Cruz. Again, this is Beyond the Lines with Rusty Komori. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. 
So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines, Achieving and Sustaining Success. Today, my guest is Justin Cruz from KHON Channel 2 News. Justin, let's follow up more about uh, the transition from radio to uh, television. Yeah. Uh, how difficult of a transition was that for you? It was, it was difficult. Internally, um, I hid a lot of the difficulty that, and nobody could see it. But even though I was a radio DJ for you know over a decade, that could not prepare me for being in front of a camera and wearing a suit. And it's a, a lot of things are going on for for weather anchors. Number one, you have to know you have to know your weather. Uh, number two, you have to know the computer system that is displaying the graphics, the green screen, the chroma key uh, behind you. Sure. Uh, you have to know about that software and create graphics. And number three, you've got to be comfortable in front of a virtual reality set, you know, the, the green screen. So there's a lot going on. Oh, and you're walking around. <laughs> and you're not reading the prompter. You're, it's, everything is coming from the top of your head. So it, I would say... Rusty, it took me about a year to finally say to myself, and I sat down and finally said, okay, I could do this. Before that year, I questioned myself so many times. Why did you make this career move? Why did you leave your comfort zone? And why did you expose yourself to potential criticism? And, and it, it, I almost quit, quite honestly. I... I, I I thought I had made the wrong decision. But after some time, you, I told myself, Rusty, I was like, okay, I think I could do this. I think I could do this. But it, it took a year, you know what I mean, of, of getting used to wearing a suit, you know, and getting used to walking and talking and pointing and, 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 and stuff like that. It's just not the, the most natural thing to work in front of a green screen um, and to, to walk and talk. But when you, when you get it, you're good. It clicks. It just took about a year for it to click for me. Well, it definitely yeah. seems that you know, risk promotes growth. Yeah. And it's very impressive that, mm. that you stuck with it. And mm. you're currently hugely successful, and hundreds of thousands of people watch you practically on a daily basis. Um, tell, tell us something uh, about you that the viewers don't know about. Hmm. Well, uh, I I could speak a little bit of Vietnamese. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, I could speak a little bit. Can you can you say a, a phrase for us right now? Uh, yeah, I, I I guess. Um, well, I'm not the best speaker, but um, a phrase. Uh, thank you. Cảm ơn. Can you say it? Cảm ơn. Cảm ơn. Cảm ơn. That's that's pretty good. That's Come on, yeah. Justin. Like, I don't know. I can't, like, super fluent, but I could, I could say a few phrases. Um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, my family, uh, we, we had a family business. We had a pest control company sure. on Guam. And, and the entrepreneurial seed from my parents is firmly implanted uh, in, my, in my soul. And, and so every time I, I look at people, and even for myself, I always... Try and see, is there a way to make a business out of a product or a thought? Do you have any uh, other businesses? I do. I do. Uh, I have uh, a business on, on the side called Hike Spikes Hawaii. Now, it's a wholesale company, and we distribute uh, traction, a traction product to hikers. Because as you know, when you go hiking here in Hawaii, it's very muddy, very slippery, so you just put these spikes on your shoes, like, um, you know, uh, snow tires. 
uh, snow spikes for in the mainland. This is same concept. You put this contraption on your shoe and you get grip and you could go, you know, hopping across little streams and, you know, uh, hike with confidence pretty much. I, I, can, uh, I can attest to that yeah. because I own hike spikes. Right. And wow, I mean, in terms of safety mm -hmm. and enjoyment, mm -hmm. I highly recommend everyone who hikes to wear hike spikes. Where, where can people get hike spikes at? You can get it at the Navy Exchange. You can get it at Ueda Shoe Store in uh, uh, Mo'ili Ili. Uh, university area. You can get it at McCulley Bike. You can also get it at uh, the Manoa Falls uh, 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 their Mini Mart over there. Uh, and if you're in Hilo, you can get it at S. Tokunaga store. And if you're in Kaka'ako, you can get it at Climb Aloha and uh, Uloha uh, hiking store. And right. it's fantastic because so many people in Hawaii love to hike. Yeah. Now, in terms of your development mm -hmm. in TV, mm -hmm. who has been your greatest mentor and why is this person very important to you? Hands down, it's been Joe Moore. Great. Uh, Joe Moore, part of the draw for me to come to KHON was to sit beside a news legend. And for me to have been doing that uh, for 11 years now, on multiple newscasts, the early newscasts and the late newscasts, and to watch Joe Moore in action, um, it's amazing. He is amazing. I've seen him do election hours of election coverage with just the notes that he has uh, on, on that desk. Granted, it takes a lot of professional people working together, uh, but he is Hawaii's newsman. And to, to work right beside him, to call him a friend now. I've been on a few of his, uh, you know, shows. He does shows on the side, um, and to just uh, ha know him on a personal basis is uh, something that I feel very privileged uh, to have. Now, there are other people that I also uh, highly or, or look up to. Uh, Shep Smith, Fox News. I like his delivery. Great. Uh, but locally, it's Joe Moore. Hands well, down. Joe Moore is a absolute icon yeah. in the news industry in Hawaii yeah. for many years and yeah. you know he's been uh, you know inspiring so many current and past mm -hmm. newscasters. Um, Kate went to news the general manager Christina Lockwood mm -hmm. uh, she has established a culture of excellence of leadership uh, in the in the KHON studios. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What do you like about her leadership and what do you admire about her? She has a great way of inspiring people to do better. I mean, she she's a great coach. She's a great mentor. She's a great friend. So when you work under somebody that just wants you to give your absolute highest potential for that reward, that's what she does. She inspires people and gets the best out of them and uh, is very positive. So I, I appreciate that. I've worked with general managers, not in TV or, or just in radio, but just in general, who are, you know, pound, 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 pound dictators. You know, that, that doesn't really inspire anybody to do good. That just really upsets them. Uh, so I like her leadership style, and I like what she's done at KHON, too. We've, we've transitioned from analog to, I'm sorry, into HD. We've got a new set. You know, we've rebranded the news. And that was all under her leadership. So she's done a fantastic job. That's great. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, Justin, what's been the biggest adversity that you've dealt with in your life so far? That's a great question. And, and actually, I've been thinking about this question just when I had my own thoughts. And, and you know, I look at it like, okay, let's, let's just call them lows. I, I categorize that into two sections. Things that have happened to me and things that are that I have caused on myself. Adversity, there's a lot. Uh, we don't have enough time for the show. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, I, let's things that I wish if I could turn back time and redo uh, are, are maybe you know I, I was a Boy Scout for many many years and I almost became an Eagle Scout, but I didn't. I was a few merit badges away from becoming an Eagle Scout. Why didn't I? Because I turned 16, got a car, and instead of driving to the Boy Scout meetings, I'd go hang out with my friends, and time passes, I never got the Eagle Scout. So I, I wish I would have done that. 
I've also been uh, in a situation at least twice in my life where I've been fired for stupid things, you know. <laughs> and and th those, um, those times, I, I was younger. I was barely, at both those situations, I wasn't even 21. I was just a young kid. And I wish I would have, uh, I, I would have, I can turn back time and, and been smart enough. But they taught me valuable lessons. So uh, to answer that question, adversity, there's been a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but they all kind of shaped me and helped me be a more responsible person today. So I wouldn't take it back. I just wish I wouldn't have been so <laughs> young and, you know, thoughtless when I was a kid. What are, yeah. share, share with me, what are some of your most memorable life, uh, life experiences so far? Oh, man, hands down. I went up in a jet with the Blue Angels. That was a, a blessing. Uh, and, and I'm really, I, I really feel b very, very blessed. It's the perfect word. I mean, I went up with the Blue Angels a few years ago, and I, I, I asked the pilot, "Don't be easy on me." And he, we pulled like seven, eight Gs. I didn't, I didn't puke. <laughs> I, I didn't get dizzy. I didn't black out. Uh, and that was, that was among my life's experiences. I've also. Uh, been able to meet a lot of celebrities in this work, uh, from singers to actors, and um, I've been able to report on significant events like the Eddie uh, surf meet right at the beach where a lot of people are not, uh, you know, have access to. Uh, so there's been some some really cool things that I've done, and again, I, I using the the blessed word because I really feel that that's that's what best describes this opportunity. Well, you know, you have a pretty big bucket list, I, I assume, mm. because you've flown with the Blue Angels mm. now. Yeah. You've jumped off the stratosphere That's in, right, in, Vegas. in Las yeah. Vegas. Uh -huh. um, do you have any other things on your bucket list? Whew. Well, I think it would be now more travel. Um, because, I mean, how can you beat going up <laughs> with the Blue Angels? I mean, you know, I, I, I can't think of anything except that I maybe would like to do a little bit more traveling uh, from here on out. Countries I haven't been to, China, India, I haven't even been to Japan. Uh, traveled Europe and U.S., but maybe it's time to start go venturing out. Oh, more. for sure. Yeah. Now, you, you're extremely successful. Um, you're sustaining success in your career. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for some of our viewers? All right. This is advice that my father told me and has resonated with me and stuck with me up till this day. No matter what you do, no matter what career path you go into, no matter what job you have, you have to be among the best at it. You can't be mediocre and you can't be definitely below the grade. So if you're going to be a teacher, be the best teacher that you possibly can. If you're going to be a weather anchor, be the best, strive to be the best, and then You'll be passionate about your job and your life, and everything else will fall into place. So regardless of what you do, just be the best at it and be known for the best. Great advice. Yeah. Well, what's in the future for Justin Cruz? I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I am still challenged at work. Uh, I think that I will probably stay if, if KHON2 would like me to. Um, I would definitely like to stay with the company. Um, and I think being in media is definitely something I want to stay in as far as a career field. Yeah. Well, I hope, you, I hope you do stay, and I know that so many viewers will want you to stay. Well, thank you. And thank you for being yeah. my guest today. Absolutely. Congratulations on the new show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us on Beyond the Lines today. Um, I'm Rusty Komori. We film every Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, from the Pioneer Plaza in the Think Tech Hawaii studios. Aloha.